everybody. Welcome back to Elegies Aya. Um, there we are again with the third episode of this visual novel. <clears throat> you here, I'm still a bit coughing, but I hope it will be for the next weeks. The next day, Aya coaxes, uh, coaxes, coaxes me out of my room and down a few of hospitals winding home. While I'm glad for the change of scenery, this little excursion uh, starts to tire me out almost as soon as it begins. Moving with, with crutches feels awkward and cumbersome, and I have, a, I have to stop and lean against the wall every so often to, to give my good leg a bit of a break. Aya is literally flying circles around me, apparently unable to come and Calm down enough to adjust to my lumbering speed. Come on, it's not much farther. Yeah, but I'm slow. Okay, okay, we're coming. I do my best to pick up the pace a little as we approach a small white exit door. Ahead of me, Aya disappears through it and then pops her head back in. I... I'd hold it open for you if I could, but... Right. Ghost. Sighing, I struggle to balance my crutches in a way that allows me to open the door and pull myself through it. But once I make it outside... Wow! This is a nice scenery. I'm sure it was worth the, the effort. Isn't it beautiful? Oh yeah, it is. It is really beautiful. <coughs> I can imagine the, the skyline at the night is really beautiful, too. Aya has led me to a large balcony that's absolutely covered in flowers and other plants. Vines creep around the hand railing, and planters of all shapes and size hold lush and brightly colored greenery. The view is made even more breathtaking by the size of the surrounding buildings. I recognize several other wings of the hospital, as well as parts of the uni university campus right next to it. I've been cramped in one room for so long that it's strange to be confronted with how massive the facility containing it really is. The garden is actually part of the treatment for some of the hospital's longer-term residents. Oh, so... person like me? Like people who are struggling with depression. Oh, so, like, for people like me? <laughs> I can really help when you take care of the flowers and watch them grow. Yeah, I bet. Being out here is making me feel a lot healthier already. I hobble forward a few steps to look out over the railing, and then immediately regret it when my head swims at a distance from here to the ground. I shift back a bit, uh, nauseously stumbling into a seated position on a small bench. I never used to be scared of heights before, but I guess breaking your leg after a desperate leap through a window will do that to you. you okay? Yeah, traumata. That's what we call a traumata. Yeah, just give me a minute. I look up at Aya, who's gazing at me with concern in her face. I. Her expression doesn't waver. She's patiently waiting for me to continue. I swallow. I still haven't really told you everything that happened to me, have I? Not in much detail. You don't have to, though, if it's upsetting you. Aww. Aya is so... so nice. No, I want to. I think it might be helpful for me to talk about it. With someone who actually cares, I mean. Not like that detective yesterday. Okay. If you want to talk, I'll listen. I lean my head back and look up at the wispy white clouds in the bright blue sky. I woke up one night and my house was on fire. The house I had lived in all my life. All my memories from my childhood up in flames. And when I went to find my parents, they were already dead. It's much easier repeating the story this time. Maybe because I already got through it once with the detective but I'm sure it helps to be in this nice, relaxing garden with my friend, too. That and the fact that I'm choosing to tell her myself, 
and that I know she'd understand and not ask any question if I changed my mind and wanted to stop. I loved my parents. We didn't always get along, of course. Totally normal. When you when you are a child or a teenager, you have moments where you can't uh, be on the same terms with your parents. <clears throat> I love my parents too, and yeah, I sometimes argued a lot with my mother. With my father, it was really, really easy to talk, because he uh, kind of shared the same interests with me, like anime. He was a big, big One Piece and Detective Conan fan. They drove me crazy sometimes. Oh yeah, I, I understand this feeling. But they took care of me. Yep, they did. They taught me a lot. I take a moment to swallow the emotion welling up inside of me. It still hurts to remember, but I want to tell Aya everything. Yeah, it still hurts. Um. Yeah. It, it just hurts. And uh, his parents aren't dead for so, t for so long, so it hurts even more. They say time will heal all wounds, but there are wounds time can't even heal. Time can just help to, to lessen the pain. I had to just leave them. Their bodies in the burning house. I was so scared I was going to die, too. The fire was spreading everywhere, and I was stuck on the top floor. In the end, I had to jump out a window. I couldn't even get the window open. I just had to smash right through the glass and hope for the best. So that's how I broke my leg, and got all those terrible cuts I had when you first saw me. But hey, I made it out alive. I find myself smiling at the conclusion of the tale, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders to have told someone about it. Wow, Zach! I didn't know you were so brave. Jumping out of a top floor window that wasn't even open? I don't know if I could ever do something that scary. Sure you could. You can fly and walk through walls, remember? I had jiggles. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I guess she meant it more in when I would be alive form. I guess I was thinking about when I was alive. Ah, that's what I thought. Do you remember much? About back then? Oh, my cat is coming. Oh, boy. Come on, lie down. Lie down, cutie. Oh. Nah, not really. It's just... I know I was a normal person like you once. At least you know that much. I have this vague sense of it. I know I wasn't always like this. It used to make me sad. I couldn't really remember. It doesn't make you sad anymore? Nope. Aya gives me a cheerful grin. I got new memories now. Some really incredible ones, too. Like the old woman who showed me this garden. But there must there must be a reason why her her ghost is still there. I mean, um, what is a ghost? It's it's a remnant of the soul, so it means her soul is still there and unreleased. So there must be a reason why her soul can't be released at the moment. <laughs> what are your theories? Are you? Uh, do you have any idea why she's still lingering at so at her soul with her soul in there, or uh, do you think nah, it's it's just a normal thing? I mean, um, some tales say that a ghost still uh, lingers in place when when they had a terrible death or when they were angry or somehow in this way. So. What are your suggestions? Let me know in the comments. I would like to read it. And I will answer it. Someone showed you? Yeah. I mean, not directly. She couldn't see me or hear me like you can. But I followed her and saw her watering the flowers almost every day. She was a patient here? 
Ah ja, Nuts. She had cancer. Ah, oh, this is my, this this is a, a theme I don't like to hear. It's not that I don't want to accept that cancer exists. It's more like I don't want to hear it. She was in and out of the hospital for a long time. Yeah, it would be my father too. Sometimes it got better. Um, Other times it got worse. But no matter how bad it got, she always tried to water the flowers when she was here. She loved flowers. You'd think someone suffering like that would be sad all the time. And sometimes she was. But she still had so much joy in her. I got to know her a lot, hanging around her room. Her name was Liz, and she was a retired teacher. Her partner used to visit her a lot, and he used to make her laugh about silly little things. Sounds a bit like my, my father and me. Um, as he was in the hospital because of his cancer. We, we always uh, talked so much nonsense and laughed about it just to... Not to avoid the fact that he had cancer, but to, to make it more easier for him. So, we joked around when, when he was a little bit breathless and I said, Hey, you don't need to do everything uh, Helena Fisher sings about in her songs. Um, because she it, Helena Fisher has a song called Atemlos, which is translated as breathless and yeah... And my father sat there and started to sing the song in his silly voice. Uh, he can't, he couldn't really sing. <laughs> and and we both laughed about it. And yeah, I guess it's the same with with uh, Liz and her partner. They they just didn't want it to to um, let cancer destroyed their, their funny moments. And she talked so fondly about everything they had done together when they were younger. All the things she was grateful to have seen and experienced. I don't think she had any regrets. She sounds like a nice lady. Reminds me of my grandmother a little bit. The one who liked Jeopardy? Yeah. She was cracking jokes right up until the end. Did Liz... Did she die too? Eventually, yeah. Sad story. I was there, actually. A part of me wondered if... If she'd come back as a ghost. If the mom of the heart monitor flatlined... If her soul would drift out of her body, and she'd be just like me. I would have had so much to talk to her about. But no dice. Because uh, Liz had a fulfilled life in some way. She was just gone. I almost want to tell Aya I'm sorry. Except for how much it annoys me when people say that to me. Have you ever seen another ghost before? Just me. You think another one will pop up once in a while in a place like this, right? But nothing yet. I wonder what's different about me and the other people. I shrug. Maybe you came back for a reason. Like you have a mission or something. That idea perks Aya right back up. Yeah, and my mission is. She contemplates. She contemplates for a moment. To solve all the mysteries of this hospital. <laughs> Starting with... That weird flower. Over there. What did she make? I've never seen one like that before. I turn to at the corner of the balcony where she's pointing. Huh. That one does look kind of weird. Is it the result of a mad scientist experiment? Or simply a freak of nature? Find out next time on Aya's Amazing Adventures! Our usually happy mood restored. Aya and I goof around a bit more in the garden before heading back to my room. What she said really got me thinking, though. 
Why is she the only ghost either of us has ever seen? Could my idea that she's here for a reason be true? And if so, what reason is that? Yeah, that's a good question, boy. What reason? <laughs> After a while, I fell Aunt Claire in what happened at the with that intimidating detective. She said she was trying to help, but I don't know. It kind of creeped me out. Yeah, here's my first lesson as your new guardian, kid. Never talk to the cops without a lawyer. <laughs> How should I have a lawyer as a kid? She picks up the business card from the nightstand and examina exam examine it with suspicion. If she comes back, you call me right away. Okay, auntie. You don't have to tell her anything. Okay. Do you think she suspects me of doing something wrong? Mm, I don't know. Hopefully not. But she's not your friend either. Remember that. Yeah. That part shouldn't be too difficult. Claire disdainful toast, uh, tosses the business card back down. So, anything else interesting happen around here lately? Any hot hospital gossip? I chuckle. Well, one of the nurses was telling me about some drama with her book club. Apparently one of the other ladies in it said she was tired of reading depressing books and only wanted to read fun stuff from then on. Which caused a bit of a scuffle because a few of them had been trying to pick books by more diverse authors. Messages about social issues and stuff. So now they're having a whole debate about the importance of educating yourself about problems in the world versus the value of escapist media for your mental health. Yes! That's the kind of gossip I'm <laughs> talking about! <laughs> okay! I never had a book club, but uh, I always talk with my good friends about the manga we read um, or the, the light novels. Um, right now, I'm reading a night novel called... Wait, wait, I need to look up the t title. Accomplishments of the Duke's Daughter. Um, it's, it's a story about Iris Amelia, the daughter of a powerful duke, um, who is... Um, who is kind of reincarnated. <laughs> it's it's an isekai story where, where a girl from our world uh, goes uh, dies and goes into the world of... What was it? A, a novel or a game? I can't remember, but it was explained in there. And uh, she's uh, reborn as uh, Iris Amelia, the daughter of the Duke. And this, this girl she was before was an accountant. Uh, so she used her intelligence to to um, avoid a really bad situation, and um, then she she got sent from her father back at home, where she should uh, care for every everything. And there she she evaluates a new system like the bank system. And uh, she built no, no new roads. She built an academy for people to learn new jobs, and yeah, she makes the life better. And uh, yeah, you you get to know uh, Iris Amelia really good, and it's really fun to read. I really recommend it to you. Yeah, Skipper. You gotta keep me updated. I want to know if they end up forming two different splinter groups. Okay, so I need to ask the nurse, hey, what's about your book club? <laughs> okay, I'll ask her about it next time she's on shift. Awesome! Oh, and I found this really cool little garden area on one of the hospital balconies. Actually, my friend Aya showed me. Cool! How's Aya doing? You never did get around to introducing us. I sigh, wishing that I could. Yeah, she's... She has a lot of difficulties talking to strangers. 
That's basically accurate, uh, I guess. Aunt Claire is probably just picturing a very different kind of problem than the real one. You must be a pretty special kid to get her to open up to you then. Again. Maybe I am, but not in the way she thinks. I hope you'll be able to stay in touch after you get out of here. Yeah, me too. If that's even possible. Hey, do you remember the last time you were in the hospital? Or were you too young? I remember going to the ER when I hit my head in gym class in fourth grade. I had a minor concussion, and I never forgive Jeff Spencer for knocking me over. Well, it was earlier than that. You had to stay for a little while when you were, oh, five years old or something? When your appendix burst. Oh yeah, I haven't thought about that in ages. I do have a little scar from the surgery, but it's faded so much over the years that it's easy to forget about it. Was it this hospital? I think it was the smaller one across town. You were born in this one, though. Not that you'd remember that. But I'll never forget your dad calling me about it. I was planning to be back in town for your mom's due date, but you came almost a month early. I was staying with this nice family in Brazil who got woken up in the middle of the night by your dad. He was trying to explain in absolutely awful Portuguese that he needed to talk to me. I don't know if anything he said made much sense, but they got me up and handed me the phone, and your dad said, Claire, it's a boy! <laughs> I couldn't wait to get back home and meet you. Was I a cute baby? <laughs> Was I a cute baby? I think every baby is a cute baby. Dad. Claire leans in with a solemn expression on her face as if she's about to tell me something really serious. You were the absolute ugliest baby I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, that's so mean, auntie. <laughs> I love. <laughs> no way. I bet I was adorable. You look like a grumpy old man. And you cried all the time. So, sack is Benjamin Button? <laughs> but your parents were totally obsessed with you. They kept trying to tell me how amazing you were, and I was like, uh, are you sure about that? Babies, man. I've never gotten a big deal about them. You've never thought about having a baby? Never. I don't think I'd be able to handle all that stress. Your mom never seemed to have too much trouble with it, though. I mean, she was tired all the time, but she was happy. Nice feeling. She really loved you. I nod silently, feeling a lump forming in my throat. And I did too, of course. No matter how funny looking you were. Right now we are a really good looking boy. <laughs> Especially when you got a bit older and started talking. And we could hang out a bit. I used to try to give you art tips with your little finger painting set. Remember that? Yeah, we have some of that on video. Or... Oh yeah, we had some on video because the videos might be... My heart sinks. We used to. I guess all our old tapes were probably lost in the fire. Aunt Claire gently takes my hand. I'm sorry about that, kid. Must be really hard because you kind of lose all your memories you had made in the past. Oh, it's really hard. Hey, maybe we can film some new home videos together. With the digital camera this time, so we can have backups. Should I get a new finger painting set too? We could reenact the old ones. <laughs> I think you're about old enough for some fancier art supplies than that, if you're interested. Sure, I could try it out. I've always liked doodling in the margins of my notes in class. In that case, I'll teach you everything I know. You'll be hobnobbing with the elite at fancy gallery openings in no time. Yeah, they'll be falling over themselves to bid on my early masterpieces. 
like Terry Catcher of Mr. Struthers and Number Two Pencil. <laughs> exactly. Does your friend Aya like to draw? Maybe she could come over for a lesson sometime, too. Maybe. I'll ask her. That would be nice. You can have friends over whenever you want, you know. I've been talking to a landlord about a pretty nice house, so if things work out, we'll have plenty of room for guests. Sounds good. Doesn't sound like a little house. <laughs> Thanks, Aunt Claire. No problem. She gives me a big cheesy grin and a thumbs up. Well, if there's nothing else you need, I guess I'll head out for now. It's getting late. See you around, kid. See you. She gives me a squeeze on the shoulder on the way on her way out. I close my eyes and lean back against the pillows, thinking about all those cute and funny videos from my childhood that I won't get to watch anymore. Dad used to love putting those on for birthdays or holidays and telling me all kinds of other stories about what I was like as I what I was like as a little kid. I guess now it's just up to me to remember. I do like drawing, you know. I open my eyes to see that Aya has suddenly materialized in front of me. <clears throat> or I used to, when I could hold a pencil, I think. Maybe I can hold a pencil for you, and you can tell me what to draw. Oh, sounds fun! I want to make a comic with superheroes! That might be a little complicated for me. Oh, negative attitude! <laughs> You won't know unless you try. I chuckle and shake my head as Aya continues to regale me with her high-concept comic ideas. Maybe it really would be fun to give it a try sometime. For the first time in I don't know how long, I stand in front of a mirror and take a good look at my reflection. It's hard to believe that it's still me. I'm lucky enough that my face doesn't look too bad. Worst burns wear on places like my back that are covered up by my clothes. But it still looks different. I must have lost a lot of weight in the hospital because my cheeks are hollower, my bone structure much more prominent than it's ever been before. And my eyes look tired. Dead. Old. Not bad, huh, kid? <laughs> Aunt Claire gives me a light clap on the back. She's talking about the dark suit that I'm wearing, which, is, which she borrowed from a friend of hers. I always thought the first time I'd wear a nice suit like this would be for my senior. I'd get dressed up in my room and then stride confidently down the stairs to my parents, parents cheering and taking pictures. Maybe I'd even have a date waiting for me at the bottom. I never imagined that I'd be struggling to pull my pants over the cast on my leg in a hospital room, eventually giving up and asking for help from my aunt. Or that she'd be the family I have left as I lean on my crutches and look in the make sure I'm all right for my funeral. Are you okay to get down to the main floor by yourself? I can go bring the car around. Yeah, sure. Claire squeezes my shoulder one last time before she leaves. You look great, kid. I doubt it. I sighed and continue to stare at a drawn and unfamiliar unfam face in front of me as I summon the energy to hobble over to the elevator. Then, another less defined but equally worried thing cure appears in the reflection behind me. You're not checking out of the hospital, are you? Not yet. I'll be back later. I'm just going out for the day. For my parents' funeral. Oh. Aya pauses for a moment before speaking again. You look nice. I scoff. I look like an exhausted hospital patient bundled into a borrowed suit. Well, it suits you a lot better than the hospital guard. That's not saying much. Aya hovers closer to me and surveys her slightly blurry and instinctive, instinct reflection. Do you think 
I would look good in a suit? Probably better than me. What you just said is not saying much. <laughs> Skipper. She pretends to punch me and I chuckle as her incorporal fist passes right through my arm. Compliment her. All right, all right. I do think you'd look pretty good. Imagine the two of us stepping out of Aunt Claire's car together in matching tailored suits. We'd be the coolest kids at the funeral. Yeah! Aya poses as if she's adjusting a tie, but her confident smile soon fades into a very frown. I wish I really could go with you. If you want me to, I mean. Sure I do. You think I want to go to my parents' funeral alone? I mean, Aunt Claire is going to be there, but it would be nice to have a friend, too. Why don't you tag along? I... I've never left the hospital before. I don't know if I can. Once again, reminded of how sad and lonely Aya's life must have been. No matter how much she expounds on the benefits of the hospital, she's still been trapped on her own. A massive building, full of illness and death, so long that she's lost track of how many days have gone. I can't imagine how she's managed to stay so optimistic after all that. Maybe she isn't optimistic, she's just doing it for Zack. Well, you won't know until you try, right? Her face lights up in the mirror, in the mirror next to me. <coughs> You really want me to come? Of course. Come on, let's go. Get. Sorry. Uh, there slipped some German words from my mouth. <laughs> Aunt Claire is waiting downstairs. With a big grin on her face, Aya follows me as I slowly make my way to the elevator and down to the front lobby of the hospital. We both pause for a moment on the, thresh uh, on the threshold of the main entrance. It feels like a momentous event. And if I'm a little nervous about leaving this place, I've gotten so accustomed uh, to over the past few weeks. I can't imagine how much more pronounced that feeling must be for Aya. Then... Ratches in hand, I lurch forward, and the automatic door slides open. Ding, ding. Okay, my my dearest uh, my dearest people, if Aya can be uh, can go out the hospital, we'll see next time. I hope you will be there with me again, and uh, we see each other next time. Until then, my, my dearest, remember, let me leave a comment what you think, what, what uh, reason it has that I are still here. I'm, I'm really curious to hear about your thoughts. So then, bye, my people.